Hello, Jos. How are you? Hello. I hope you can all hear me. I can certainly hear you, including the interesting discussion about Facebook's new coin, which, of course, I'm very enthusiastic about. Well, why wouldn't I be? <laughs> yes, you, you, you dialed in at the, the right time. So, Jos uh, is head of uh, marketing. And he's joining us from, where, where are you? Are you in, in, in Stuttgart, I'm, I'm told? I'm currently visiting our office in Stuttgart, yes. Head of marketing at Nexon, but uh, just a small company, not anything huge. Let me see if I can switch to my presentation slides. Can you see them now? Okay, so just to let you know, you're going to get a signal when you have about five minutes uh, left. Uh, I'm okay. going to ask the guys to, to put it on the chat room. Uh, we can see your presentation. We can see a video of you. So go, go right okay. ahead. All right. Um, it was an interesting discussion to drop into the Facebook thing. I have, of course, to some degree, opinions as well on this, especially given that privacy is of course, a thing. I mean, it was already said, I think, by Milan that the Facebook coin will not be anonymous. Now, you can say, well, you know, that just is a good thing because, you know, then it won't be used by all kinds of criminals who just use Bitcoin and other things to, you know, buy and sell drugs and weapons and other stuff. That's the point, right? I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that and similar things in my presentation. Because others here talked about, I think, very practical things around privacy, regulation, um, some, some specifics of privacy risks, and of course, the money side of things. What I want to try and talk about is a little bit more of the fundamental side of it. Uh, why does it matter? That's also why I have the most used argument against privacy as title of my presentation. I have nothing to hide. I want to talk about that. And I want to talk a little bit about the cloud, because that happens to be my business and what we are doing at NextCloud, trying to build a private cloud that keeps your data yours. So those are the main subjects of my presentation. Now, first, a tiny little bit about me. I'm a farmer's boy, as my wife always says. I come from, well, actually my father and uh, grandfather were born and worked on this farm. It's a little farm in the southwest of the Netherlands. Yes, I'm Dutch, that's why I have such a unpronounceable last name. And I did some open uh, open source as a hobby when I was young, while I was working as a business consultant. Luckily, I've recovered from that, and I managed to get a job in open source, where I was community manager for SUSE Linux. After that, I did the same job at OwnCloud, and now I do, as I said, head of marketing at NextCloud. And I live in Berlin because, well, it's a beautiful city, and I really like it there, so why not? Now, as I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about cloud. I'm going to talk about this privacy thing. And I'm going to talk a little bit about NextCloud, but only if I get to it. Because it's, you know, there's a lot of slides that I have and not that much time. So starting with the cloud. Now, I think all of us know all the good things you can do with a cloud. Yeah? There's, there's big boys, the big companies, they have built really great services. From YouTube and Gmail to Facebook, and Dropbox and Tumblr. We use it every day. And it's really convenient. You just upload your files and you can have them available everywhere, share them with other people. If your phone gets stolen, you just log into your new phone and your whole address book and everything is there again, even sometimes your SMS history. And that's really convenient. I mean, you, you share your files on Facebook, your, your pictures, well, your face, your entire life, because it works. You, you can easily talk to friends and family. You get you know, you get to see how their lives are going and they can follow what's happening to you. All the baby pictures, all the food pictures, it's all there. And the nice thing is for none of this, you really pay anything, well, at least not any money. And this, of course, gets us kind of to the next point. I mean, there is this saying, yeah, if you're not paying for a product, you are the product. And there's, of course, some truth to that. You should ask yourself, yeah, where is my data? Who can access it? And of course, what are they doing with it? And there are a bunch of answers to that. The simple one is, it's in the cloud. I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you time to read these and the other comics simply because we don't have enough time, but you can find them at xcassidy.com. I will uh, spell that out later if you want. The real question is, who has access to your data? That's what you should be thinking about. And of course, that's the big companies where you store your data. That is certainly also the government organizations that 
demand access from these companies to that data. Uh, it, it doesn't matter where you are or where your data is. Amazon, Google, Facebook, they have to operate in every country of the world and they have to follow the local laws. And if the local laws in any of these countries say you must give access to any data we want at any point, then these companies will do that. It's as simple as that. Uh, so thinking that the security agencies don't have access to it, I think, is rather naive. Now, of course, you can say, well, I don't care. I'm not doing anything bad or weird on there. We have to keep in mind that bad or weird is very much a matter of cultural you know, definition. Yeah? For example, Americans don't really mind all the blood and gore that you have in violent movies, but oh my God, if somebody dares to say the word shit, because that is completely inappropriate, don't you dare it. So they have a different standard than in Europe, where it's kind of the other way around. We tend to not really like violence that much, but cursing is not that big of a deal, eh? or porn. Eh? If you see a nipple in a, in a British or American movie, that's a completely like, ah, you know, and we're like, yeah, pff. I mean, the Germans especially, they're known for, you know, sunbathing naked in the parks. And seriously, that really does happen here in Berlin. So there are differences in culture in this regard. And of course, company companies have to follow the rules of the local countries, but they also tend to globalize some of these rules. And of course, they follow the lowest common denominator. Uh, it, it makes sense to some degree with copyright, for example. And Dropbox has been deleting copyrighted content for a few years now. If you upload a movie and it matches a hash, then Dropbox will just not let you upload it or it will delete it. Okay, fair enough. This is not great, but at least there are no humans looking at it, etc. Okay, but Google has actually been deleting porn, which, by the way, in some countries is completely legal but they delete it, it's against their terms of service, and this is actually blocking legitimate business of some people. Yeah, there are people, porn actresses and actors, who create porn on demand for customers, and then when the customer is paid, they share it via Google Drive. Now, whether you like that business or not, it is legal in a lot of places, and it isn't up to Google to decide that you can't run your business over Google Drive just because they don't like your business. And this is happening. Yeah? This is not how it should be. And this is, by the way, happening all over the internet, especially if you're in the porn industry, you're screwed to you know, abuse the terms a little bit. And by the way, this can go even further and as in theory hit everyone because Microsoft has recently banned what they called offensive language and inappropriate content. I mean, that can mean anything from Skype Office 365 and all of their other online platforms. This means in theory that when you have a conversation with a friend and you say, oh shit, Skype could beep it out. Or even worse, they could block you from Skype for a day for saying that. Uh, these companies shouldn't have this kind of power. And that gets us to one of the issues with privacy. So let's talk a little bit about privacy and why this matters. Now, the argument always used is, I have nothing to hide. And I have three things to say to that. First of all, you do, you should. And besides, it's not really the point. So let's go over these three, shall we? First of all, what do you have to hide? And the thing is, you don't know what you have to hide. There are uncountless rules and regulations all over the world, and especially with the cloud, as I just gave a few examples. These are enforced freaking all over the world, which is totally not working. Eh? I mean, what is next? We cannot discuss Tiananmen Square because the Chinese don't like it, so you can't discuss it on Office 365. Is this a crazy idea? No, it's not a crazy idea because this is already happening with porn, which is not allowed in some parts of the US and therefore blocked all over the world by Google. Eh? So next up, censorship that is available, that is enforced in some countries, could be enforced globally. Now, there have already been a few lawsuits in a few countries where the judge would demand global companies to take down a website, not just for their citizens, but for the whole world. Uh, what is going to happen here? And there are so many rules and regulations, even in your own country, that you don't know about. Yeah? Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of laws and rules and regulations that you probably didn't know were illegal. 
Now, most of the time, these aren't used so much, but they can be. Yeah, uh, they're they're used. A way of putting it is at the discretion of the police. For example, it's an American example, but in Washington State, it is illegal to be smelly. And you think being smelly? What the heck is that for a weird rule? Yeah, if you use too much eau de cologne, nobody will complain about it. That's not the point. However, if there are some homeless people hanging out in a place and the police wants to remove them, but they don't really have a rule or a clear law that they can use, they will use that one. They will just say, hey, you're homeless, you smell, I will take you in custody. And therefore, better not hang out here anymore because we will lock you up. It's a rule that can kind of be used arbitrarily. Now, to some degree, that is not terribly bad. Sometimes it is useful if people are making a lot of noise in the middle of the night, but alcohol drinking outside is illegal. So, hey, you know, you grab them for the fact that they have a couple of beers with them. That's good because that means you can stop the noise in the neighborhood without having to do all kinds of complicated things or having to tell the neighbors, sorry, there's nothing I can do. Yeah? But this is a bit of a problem when you have this thing called the Internet and the cloud. Because if everything you do all the time, 24-7, is being monitored, there is always something that can be used against you. Uh, if you were an, an annoying local activist who was protesting the removal of a little park and the local politician wants to do something about it, and they can do a request to Facebook to figure out when you, I don't know, crossed the street wrong or walked over a piece of grass where you weren't allowed to walk and fine you for that. And at some point, bother you enough that you end up in jail. This is not a scenario that's entirely crazy. There's a problem with that, obviously. So again, you do have more to hide than you think. Yeah? And, and I'm not even talking about the fact that rules change. Yeah? In the Netherlands, it's pretty well known that in the early 1900s, we had a lot of information on citizens, including, for example, uh, their ethnic background, which was used by the Nazis in World War II. They would just go to the local government office and just ask, hey, who in this village is Jew? And then they knew how many people and who to pick up. That's obviously not really a good thing for the world. So this is, first of all, what you have to hide. Um, now, second of all, there is, give me a second. So second of all, there is stuff that you should be hiding. Yeah, there is no perfect government in the world. And if you want to change the way society works, you will have to sometimes break rules. Uh, I mean, we've globally made a lot of improvement in women's rights, in, in LGBTQ rights and all kinds of stuff. So, think of religions, think of the church and Galileo. Yeah? If at the time of Galileo, we could not break the rules because the church had 100% control over everything that is happening, yeah? science would have been stopped in its track. Yeah? So, there's, of course, the independence of many countries, which all started with, well, an independence war. But, you know, the people who started that war, the people who maybe today you are proud of because they rescued the country from whatever evil dictatorship that's what there was or whatever bad regime or maybe another country and made you independent, those people were criminals at the time. Yeah, according to the laws at that time, they were criminals. And if there was perfect law enforcement, if the government would have known everything, your country would probably not be called the name that it has today. And you wouldn't have a dem democracy. So there is a problem with a government knowing and being able to control everything. And us putting all our data online gives them that power. That's a problem. And yeah, I have actually some examples here that I think make it pretty clear. Yeah, this is legal. These are criminals. This, this is, yeah, this matters, I think. Now, the last point comes to me personally, because um, as I said, I've worked at business consultant 
And that's because I studied psychology, organizational psychology, to be exact. And one thing you learn as a psychologist is that it's really important for people to control how other people see them. Yeah, that's why you take a shower in the morning and put up makeup and, you know, deodorant, clothes, actually. Right? We're not all wearing the same clothes because we try to have an identity. We want to show who we are, what we care about. Uh, I mean, on Facebook, you put the pictures of a party. You don't put the pictures of the hangover the next day. Why is that? Because you're trying to create an impression. Uh, we, we care about how other people see us. It's a really, really fundamental thing to how people are. And, you know, you're that loving husband, the funny guy, trusted son, perfect politician. And, yes, you are never exactly that way. That's reality. So how is it when a company or individuals with power have the ability to expose everything about you, all those things you want to hide? That's not healthy. That's not normal. And a lot of research has shown that people change their behavior just by knowing that they are being watched. Uh, just when there's a camera in the room, people will change their behavior. They will not be who they are simply because it changes them and their behavior. And if you are constantly being watched, you change your behavior constantly. You're not who you are. You're not the same human being. It changes us as humans. And I think that's, that's something often overlooked, but privacy is a basic human need. It's really important for people. Yeah. So the key here is you should, you have something to hide, you should have something to hide, and you need something to hide. It's normal, it's healthy, is good for society. And now privacy is being eroded. I mean, all our data is on Facebook and on Google and all these other platforms. And who gets hurt? Uh, what is the victim of privacy issues? It's not going to be the government because, you know, they control well, pretty much everything. and They can limit. Uh, politicians who do nasty stuff, they will have the power to protect their privacy. Criminals then? No, of course not. I mean, criminals have something to hide. Therefore, they will use encryption and other things, even if we would make it illegal. If you make encryption illegal, most of the people in this room will not be using encryption. But the criminals will, because they need it. And they're breaking the law anyway. So if it's illegal to use encryption, what do they care? Uh, and there are many ways of hiding encryption. So it's not like you can find them that way either. So terrorists and drug traffickers and, and, and big oil companies and, and, you know, the corporate world, they will all have privacy. It will not be easier to expose their crimes, not at all. But normal people like grassroots politicians and, and little, you know, social organizations and individuals who try to make the world a better place, they don't have privacy. and They can be bullied by the bigger organizations who do have privacy and have the data of the little guys. Yeah. So uh, the goal often of all kinds of laws that limit privacy is to, I don't know, fight terrorism and fight crime. That's nonsense. Seriously, it's nonsense. Because if you make encryption illegal, criminals will still have it. Yeah. it this is just not how it works in practice. And this discussion keeps coming up. It's, it's, it's not about crime. Anyway. Let's talk about solutions to this because we don't have a whole lot of time left. I actually need to quickly check how much I have left. Yeah, just a few minutes. All right. So one possible solution is to decentralize our data. It shouldn't all be in one place. Yeah? We need to be able to control it ourselves. It protects you in many ways. And, well, I will skip this. I'm going to talk about next slide. So Nextcloud is a private cloud. It's essentially, it offers you all the functionality of Office 365, but you can run it on your own server that can be on a Raspberry Pi, that can be in a data center uh, at a company you trust, you know, a hosting provider. There are more than 150 hosting providers that run Nextcloud. So there will be one in Bulgaria or whatever country you are from or in your city. Uh, you can go there, look the people in the face, who will be hosting your data and decide if you can trust them. You don't need to trust an American or, or Chinese or wherever it's from company with your data. You can pick
pick a company that you trust or host it at home. And it has all the functionality. And we're having a video call right now on Nextcloud Talk. This is running on the server from my company, Nextcloud Game here in Germany. And you can host this yourself. You can have video calls the way we are having this right now. It's completely self-hosted. Nobody gets the data. Nobody gets the metadata. Google, Facebook, nobody knows that we're having this call here. Well, except if any of you are putting pictures on Instagram because, you know, that's owned by Facebook and then they will know anyway. Of course, that's how it works. So I think it's almost time for questions. So I'm going to skip all the details about Nextcloud. Um, but it's completely open source, of course, which makes it again once more easier to, to host. Everything. So let's do these um, questions, shall we? I will. Um, I will. Can I get my mic on? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we're we're running short on time, but let's 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 get one question from the audience. I think we're all uh, you know hearing from today from you and from other speakers about the importance of privacy. So. One question. I'm, go I'm, go I'm going to call on uh, Ilian. If we can get the microphone to him. Yep. Hi, Jos. Ilian here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, perhaps you were uh, you were already heard about the China's social scoring system. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> what do you think about that, and how? Likely, are you considering that to be transferred to other continents? So, I find an interesting subject. I talked about this yesterday with some colleagues. Obviously, privacy is something we discuss a lot at Nextcloud, and we are currently having a contributor week here in Stuttgart with a bunch of community members and employees and everyone. And um, this subject came up yesterday. So, on one hand, uh, I come from a little village where privacy is also not a big thing, right? We have a surveillance system called Your Neighbors. And this surveillance system, of course, puts social pressure on people to behave properly. And when we all started to live in big cities and not know or care for each other and stop standing up in the bus for an elderly lady, for example, or a pregnant woman or an old man, things change a little bit. And to some degree, I definitely think that we as a society need to look for ways to keep teaching each other and putting a little bit of social pressure on people to behave. Of course, what China is doing here is that on steroids in a really extreme way. They can exert complete control over people. And, you know, if you don't behave, you can't take a flight. If you don't behave, you can't do X, Y, Z. This is... On one hand, clever, because it allows them, of course, to keep their dictatorship in place. On the other hand, it totally hits on all three points that I just gave. You will no longer be able to change anything in China. Yeah? Think of a Tiananmen Square. This will not even happen. You will never get there because you are locked up long before you would even get anywhere near the square, so to say. Uh, there will be no way to improve things if there is a group of people in your society that is abused or treated really badly, like, for example, the Uyghurs, uh, the Muslims right now in big parts of China, or in Tibet, the Tibetans, the Buddhists there. There is nothing you can do about it. You will not even know about it. And if you dare talk about it, you will be stopped. Yeah. So society will come to a standstill, socially speaking. And not just that, I think it will regress, right? The, the, the most repressive uh, social norms will be able to survive and will even probably become the norm. I think you'll get a really repressive society this way. And I do think the risk is that this will spread because especially for dictatorships, ah, this is a dream. You get perfect control. I mean, Kim Jong-un in North Korea has been trying to build a 1984-style society. China has the tools now, and I'm sure they are selling it to him at the moment. So, yeah, this is relevant, and it's terribly scary. Very, very insightful. Thank you very much, Jos. Uh, let's give him a round of applause.